Hey, everybody. Movie retrospective time. I have to say I was not uh, all that surprised when this one won the Patreon poll because I seriously can't believe we haven't done... Well, shit, it's not that we haven't done Day of the Dead, which is what we're doing today, the George Romero movie. I don't think we've done Dawn of the Dead. Did we do Dawn of the Dead? I don't think we did that one either. Or Night of the Living Dead. I guess you kind of took them for granted. That's kind of what I was thinking. And it's yeah. like, really, the reason that I decided... I know it's kind of like ass backwards that we're doing Day of the Dead first... Yeah. Um, but I guess I just thought of it because I saw that it was on Tubi when I was like scrolling through like horror movies. So I was like, oh shit, man. And that's the one that I haven't seen. Like I've saw that the longest time ago. So I wanted to kind of give it a revisit. Uh, so we, uh, watched it on Tubi last night and today we're going to talk about it. So, yeah. uh, yeah. Day of the Dead. This was actually the least favorite of the series for me, but, we, yeah. but watching it again, it's real watchable. It's real entertaining. It I is. Liked it. Yeah. I liked it better than I remembered liking it. Me too. Yeah. Me too. I mean, it's been several years since I've seen it. Um, you know, obviously George Romero went on to make, you know, other movies. He made like Land of the Dead. He made uh, Diary of the Dead um, and a few couple other ones. But it's like this one is kind of like the third of the first like unofficial trilogy. You know, Night of the Living Dead in 1968. And then you had like Dawn of the, De uh, Dawn of the Dead and then Day of the Dead came out in 1985. And so I kind of feel like I can see where people are coming from with, I mean, this still has like pretty, it's really high ratings on like, uh, you know, Rotten Tomatoes and all that other kind of stuff, but it's the lowest of the three. And I can see why. This is a really different, um, it's different tonally yeah. than Dawn of the Dead for sure. Because I feel like Dawn of the Dead was almost more comedic. A little bit. Yeah. Like, it had, like, a lot more comedy well, sort of elements. Dawn of the Dead had some lighthearted moments in it. Yeah. But it, it it had a lot of realism in it. It was real. Yeah. It had, in the way of, like, say, like, The Walking Dead. Yeah. kind of has realism in it. This one is, in a way, not as serious, even though a bunch of fucking gore happens in it. Or it's not as realistic to me. I had a hard time with certain elements in the movie, but it still does. It was still fun to watch. So yeah, it just did. That's how this is going to come at you. You can't take this one totally seriously. Well, I feel like any horror movie that came out in the eighties, it's yeah. kind of hard. Well, especially because a lot of them were like tonally kind of. Um, and this one in particular, I can see where people criticize. It's like, oh, the acting is over the top. It's like everyone's just kind of screaming at each other the whole time. This is definitely, I think, the angriest of the yeah. movies. And also maybe the bleakest. I think this is more similar tonally to the original Night of the Living Dead, which just like everybody squabbling and um, and Man. everything, than, than it is to Dawn of the Dead. So I think that Dawn of the Dead is so revered and it's like that's easily like the favorite of everyone's, you know, out of those three. So I feel like people were expecting another movie like that and George Romero made a kind of a different a little bit of a different take on it. You know what I'm saying? I guess it's open to interpretation. It is. To me, there there were kind of elements of fucking The Thing, the original John Carpenter. Yeah, with the, the isolation, like everyone yeah. kind of at each other's throats and shit. Kind of military outpost, isolated and outside threat. They don't trust each other. There's fucking internal battles going on. It had that aspect to it. Tonally, I kind of thought it was a little bit like Return of the Living Dead. But that's just me. That's just my. See, I didn't get that at all. That's I mean, I Return of the Living it. Dead was a straight up comedy. I thought this was straight up comedy. I, mean, I don't think it was meant to be. From, though. from the point of all right, I, this is the thing. Tom Savini is a fucking Vietnam veteran. He he knows military culture. All right, there's a lot about the soldiers in this movie that had me laughing because it's just not realistic. So from my point of view, it was comedy. You well, know, like uh, I said, I could, that's why a lot of people like kind of accuse a lot of the action being like over the top. Yeah. It doesn't bother me as much because I feel like they don't really, I don't think they really specify in the timeline of the movie how long these people have been down there, but it seems like it's been a long time and everyone's just kind of starting to lose their fucking minds. I mean, not the military guys yeah. and the scientists are all kind of starting to crack. So I kind of feel like that might go a long way toward explaining like why everyone is acting like such a fucking lunatic because yeah. mm -hmm. they've been down there such a long time. There no progress is being made. They can't contact anybody else. They think they're the only people left in the whole world and everyone's just starting to like lose their fucking yeah, shit. Yeah, it's just unclear. I mean, look, you yeah. got you got a guy with a really bad Jamaican accent, another guy with, <laughs> a, poor really, guy. <laughs> with a really bad Irish accent. You got an army of 
fucking long-haired guys with mix and match uniforms from different periods. The weapons were for all from different periods. Uh, you got 50-something year old privates serving underneath fucking 40 year old captains. You know, it's just that it doesn't work that way. You know what I mean? Now, how, if they had somehow cleared up or cleaned up this store to where these aren't really soldiers, these are remnants of fucking survivors from the surface that are just found old equipment and became soldiers, called them. You don't. You don't know. You don't know. Yeah. They're definitely not soldiers as I knew them, and they're definitely not soldiers as Tom Savini would have known them. He was in the infantry like me. He was just from another era. So yeah, he was Vietnam. Fr- he was a uh, v- combat photographer. From Vietnam. That's right. But he was with the infantry. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of like infantry service. So he knows how they really are, you know. Um, and there's just no, not there's no military realism in it at all. So from my point of view, it was just entertain entertainment and comedy. Yeah, but like I said, that's it's, how I see it too because right. it doesn't it doesn't really bother me all that much. And like I said, you know, the scientists and they're kind of like a little bit over the top and caricatures also. I just and I just see it as how everyone's just like losing their fucking minds because yeah. they've been underground and there's zombies everywhere and they don't know what to do about it or what's going to happen. And so and they all hate each other, so they're all just kind of like losing their shit. For me, being kind of like a fucking gun nut historical nut. I'm tripping over the weapons that they had. They look like Colt SPO, SP1s or S, SPO1 fucking rifles is what they look like. Kind of like a, it's an M16A1, the Army version. It has the forward assist on it, but not the brass deflector with the old duckbill fucking flash suppressor on the end of it, the fucking triangular hand guards. It's classic rifle today. But that would have been way out of date even for the 80s. You know, that well, was, see, that's that the was thing. The 60s. That was the I 60s. think in M16. universe, I think this movie is not supposed to be taking place in 1985. Yeah, I'm not sure when it's supposed to be. I think it's only supposed to be like in like in the um, timeline of the zombie apocalypse, which, like I said, the first movie which came out in 1968, and then when Dawn of the Dead came out, uh, whenever that was, what was that, 1979, something like yeah. that. But I think there was only supposed to be a couple of years in between those. I don't think it was supposed to be like the amount of time between the movies coming out. Yeah. I but, think in universe there was only a few then years. Then you throw in out there. There's, then you throw out half of them are carrying fucking. Uzis, which is an Israeli submachine gun, and that, that was, I think, late '60s too. So I, I got to go back, but really, you didn't see them in common usage until the '70s. So it's it, it's ambiguous. And then there was some HK91s in there or G3 rifles. I guess it might have been '60s, '70s. I think that maybe they're talking about the 1970s. But the 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 uniforms they're wearing is it's just OD green. And, you know, by 85, they were using fucking BDUs, which are camouflage. Well, like I said, I don't think in, so I don't think in universe, I don't think it's supposed to be set in the 80s. Yes, it can't be. Like in the timeline. I don't know if they really put that much thought into it. Right. But I don't think that it was supposed right. to be. I think it was only supposed to be like a little, yeah, a see, little me, while. Yeah, you know, me, my fucking extension to military detail, I'm fucking, my, friend, my, my mind's kind of spinning. When is this supposed to be taking place? You yeah. You know what I mean? That's... But they were it, they were cool guns, and then because I really couldn't tell what the hell was going on in terms of the time, and the military situation, I just say this is comedy. That's how I'm interpreting. It. Or it's just like a fun, it's just fun movie. Right. Yeah, that's fun what movie. I mean. That's I, right. I don't take it all that seriously. Right. Like I said, I don't know if it was like intentionally a comedy because it does right. seem like um, it, it's a very angry right. movie. The first and the second one though were a lot more realistic. Yeah, I guess. When, yeah, when you, I guess you, so. Like with the settings, and you know, I mean, you knew, you knew what time frame this was happening in. Yeah, you know. Um, so I guess, I guess, Day of the Dead is almost kind of like it's a post-apocalyptic movie. Yeah. And they, they're, they're all carrying relics of of the past around. So maybe they were down there twenty years. I don't know. Well, it, it could have been because the thing about it is that in in universe, and it's weird because. The, the place where they shot, like, all the underground scenes, um, it was, like, this uh, this big, like, mine. It was, like, an old mine in Pennsylvania. Yeah, the, se- the setting is great. And um, that mine was actually used for what they said it was during 
the movie where they said that was there was old Hollywood film stored down there. There was old like government records. It was all this kind of stuff. And they didn't, nobody really used it anymore, but that's what it was used for. And so George Romero basically like wrote the script around that location yeah, just idea. because they wanted to use it. So but it's, and all the bats and shit that right. were flying around, they're like, it was cold down there. Like it was all cold and wet and yeah. like it was all fucking up their equipment. A lot of them slept down there because yeah. it was so far like that to was, go to the... That was the great old school way of making a movie that's what they do with escape from new york basically they had a burned out fucking part i think it what was it chicago or something it was burnt for i thought it was st louis was it st louis yeah Missouri a, or some somewhere like that somewhere in the a, midwest they had a huge fucking blocks and blocks and blocks of burned out city and fucking carpenter goes we're gonna make a movie on here we're gonna make a movie here because you just you can't buy a setting like that. Well, yeah. I mean, look what they so, did with, like, Session 9 with yeah. that fucking creepy-ass, like, yeah. abandoned mental hospital. Yeah. It's like, we got to write a movie about this shit. Just was born. <laughs> Escape from New York. Fucking fantastic class. But, yeah. So, the same thing happened here where it's yeah. like they, they basically had that location and he wanted to write something to do with that. Um, although the, all the exterior scenes were actually shot in Florida, in uh, Fort Myers and on Sanibel Island. Um, because George Romero was living there at the time. So basically what ended up happening with this now, obviously Night of the Living Dead, huge success, Dawn of the Dead, huge success, um, both critically and, you know, with audiences. So basically George Romero is kind of like riding high at the time because a lot of people were like, oh, you know, he's, he's actually like a cool filmmaker and he's being successful and everything. So he got, I believe it was a three picture deal. I can't remember, um... Shit, I can't remember the production company, but they gave him a three-picture deal. They said, look, you can make whatever you want as long as one of them is a sequel to Dawn of the Dead. And he was like, okay, but I don't really want to do a sequel right now. So first he made Knight Riders uh, with Tom Savini with the, you know, the guys on the nights. I think Ed Harris was in that too. Like that the, was terrible. The motorcycle guys. He yeah. did that? That was terrible. Yeah, he made that. that movie. And then he made Creep Show, which That's good was movie. fucking epic. Yeah. Now the stupid thing about that, and we talked about this a little bit, I think, on our Creep Show review, but it's like when Creep Show came out, I mean, now it's like a fucking classic. I mean, everybody yeah. fucking loves Creep Show because it's amazing. Yeah. But when it came out, everyone was kind of like, meh. You know, they didn't really, which is amazing to me, but yeah. whatever. Um, so George Romero was kind of like, well, shit, man, I'm like making all this stuff and no one's really all that into it. So then he decides he finally goes around and make Day of the Dead. Now, like I said, he had the location and his first, his first script, I think was like two hours, two and a half hours long, something like that. He said he wanted to make, quote unquote, the gone with the wind of zombie movies. Damn. So he had like this really like... Um, kind of massive like idea that he wanted to do. And I'm not sure exactly what it all entailed, but because Knight Riders tanked and because Creepshow didn't do as well as they expected it to do, they basically, I mean, initially Day of the Dead was supposed to have like a seven, $8 million budget. And the production company was like, yeah, we're cutting that in half. So he had to like pare down the script for like only three and a half million instead of he thought he was going to have like seven or 8 million to make the shit. So he had to really like, kind of take out a lot of shit that he wanted. So he basically had to like restructure the whole thing. But I mean, okay, so there's like a documentary and it's called The World's End. I think it came out in 2013. Um, I think it used to be on Shudder, but I didn't see it on there anymore. But you can watch it for free on YouTube because I just watched it earlier today. And George Romero basically said, yeah, you know, I did have to like cut down the script because, you know, the, you know, the budget got cut in half. But he's like, the movie that you see is the movie that I wanted to make. It's not kind of like, oh, I didn't get to make the movie I wanted or blah, blah, blah. Although one thing that did happen was that the production company were like, because he was like, well, I want to make it. That was another reason that they cut the budget in half was because he wanted to say, I, I don't want it to be rated. I want it to be unrated so I can do all the gore and shit like that that I want. And they were like, um, yeah, okay, but we don't want you to do that. So it's like then, you know, they, they have the budget too. So that was another reason why. Uh, but he was like, look, I, I want this movie to be like super over the top gory and shit like that. And I will say that is easily, easily the best thing about this movie is the gore is incredible. Yeah. The but fucking there, effects look fucking great. There, there's a lot more to this movie than gore, though. Besides, oh, yeah, besides, but I'm saying that's my favorite part of it. For me, it was a couple of the characters really stood out. Well, first of all, I'm going to say the setting is fucking fantastic. I didn't appreciate it on my first viewings of this. You know, now that I'm a little older and I, it's been a long time since I've seen it, I look at it now and says, yeah, that fucking mind setting was fucking very believable. Kind of had the feeling of fucking being trapped in that damn 
oh, yeah. underground thing. That... Well, because they were. Right. I mean, because the crew were living down there. There are three characters that really stand out in terms of good acting. The female scientist, what was her name? Oh, yeah. Um, um, I don't Do- Sarah. Dr. Sa- Sarah Bowman. Yeah. That's a, that's a really well-acted character. She did a great job on that. Fucking Dr. Frankenstein. Yeah. I, that love, guy, I love that guy. That guy did a old, fucking knocked that performance out of the park. And seeing that character now, I got to check the dates. But that's got to be the prototype for the Herbert West character. That, um, well, what, what's his name? Fucking Jeffrey Combs. Jeffrey Combs played. Because the his, speech the, the, pattern the cadence and of his cadence, voice is very similar. And also how he got mad, that is exactly Dr. Herbert West. Now, see, I wonder if one ripped off the other, or if it was dates. just kind of like, they're like, okay, act like a mad scientist, and that was just the know. first thing that came to those two guys' minds. I'm not really a, sure. I got a strange feeling. I'm pretty sure that, Dawn of the, uh, that Day of the Dead came out first. And when, I did, a, when did reanimate? See, I thought they I got, came out the same year. I thought they I came out the same year. I got a weird feeling that Jeffrey Combs ripped that character off. That or like speech. I said, it might have been the other way around. Because I got to check. Or like I check. said, if they came out the same year, then it would be really hard to... Maybe they just influenced each other somehow. Maybe they knew each other. I'd like to fig- find that out. But but I'm watching that guy do that performance, and I'm like, that's Herbert West. Yeah, he seemed a lot like Herbert that's West. That's Herbert West. And fucking, that's the same character played by two different guys. Yeah. And then the third character that knocks it out of the park is a dude that played fucking z- the zombie it's Bub. Bub. That's a fucking great performance. Everybody was, loves Bub. It's all facial acting. He's a theater fucking, actor, that's they, why. He did a great job on that. That, that. that was Academy Award winning acting. George right Romero there. said that too. He did? <laughs> like on the documentary. I Absolutely. Just that's a, a, that that should have got a, a fucking, He said he should have got a fucking Oscar. Got a, 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 fucking, a, a fucking Oscar for that shit. That is the, exactly. His, his performance was perfect. Because, dude, the zombie is the first time you're kind of like having a relationship with this zombie through the screen. You're like, yeah, I understand it. The eye fucking, the, the, the eye acting and the facial expressions. Yeah, amazing. And the fucking perfect, perfect. Knocked it out of the park. Best zombie performance ever. Well, that's why, I mean, and you can see now why Bub is on, like, so, yeah. so much of the subsequent merchandising and stuff yeah. like that. Because people really responded. Yeah. And what's funny is that... Bub ends up being a heroic fucking figure in the fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, he does. He, you know, he, he exceeded the sum of his parts. You know what I mean? He fucking avenged the death of his friend, who was a living person. Yeah. Yeah. He was very much like a Frankenstein's monster kind yeah, of performance. I guess like, you could say. Where yeah. he's very, like, sympathetic, or even like King Kong or something like right, that. Like yeah. a sympathetic monster type he of thing. He didn't choose to be a zombie. It just happened to him. Yeah, it's like he couldn't help it. Yeah, yeah. He can't help it. Yeah. So I really liked, so I really liked, and I know that uh, Romero went, went in that direction subsequently, like with Land of the Dead and stuff like that, where the zombies were starting to, like, be, like, somewhat intelligent and could actually start to plan and shit like that. So this was kind of the the genesis of that and bub was the first one because that was kind of dr frankenstein's uh his name was dr logan really but everybody yeah, called everybody, him, was called everybody him called him a frankenstein during the movie yeah. but um that was kind of his even though he was batshit insane um he had like the right idea he had like good intentions he was like yeah. look we have to live on a planet with all these zombies yeah. and we can't kill them all because we don't have enough you know ammo we don't there's not enough of us so it's like we have to make them docile we have to yeah. like train them to not eat us you know yeah. what i'm saying there's something tonally about that character not only did that character remind me of herbert west he also kind of reminded me of blair in the thing yeah 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 i Remember see what blair? you're saying he was, yeah he actually was he ended up being batshit crazy yeah. In the end. Or, not really, it's just that I understand why he was doing what he was doing. Yeah. It made sense. Yeah. But it didn't make practical sense. You couldn't you couldn't civilize all those fucking zombies. No, but it's like, I, I kind of got to the point, too, where it's like, if they thought that they were the only people left on Earth, which subsequently, like in Land of the Dead and stuff, you find out that there actually were other people. Yeah. But these people think... That they are the only people left. It's like they show at the beginning. They go out in the helicopter. They go 100 miles. And, like and nobody's there. They go to like the street. And it's just like a bunch of fucking zombies. And an alligator. Uh, you know comes out like in the streets of Fort Myers or whatever. And so they think no one's alive but them. So it's kind of like what else are they going to do? And they all hate each other. They can't live in this fucking mine like forever. Yeah. So they at least want to have some some hope i guess of like just going somewhere and not having zombies just like wanting to eat their faces all the time so it's like what else what else could you do so like i said even though dr logan is 
a crazy person, um, he's he has a completely like valid idea, and he has like a valid idea. Like he does horrible things. Like spoiler alert, he does end up. He doesn't kill the soldiers. Like later, he doesn't start, but but he does for sure. Like take their dead bodies and experiment on them without telling anybody. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? So the like the the very famous uh, effect of like the guy who's just laying there on the table and like his whole head is gone and it's just like his little brain sticking up. Yeah. Fun fact: Tom Savini and his crew called that gag the moose clit, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> just because of like what it looked like. Yeah. I'm like, how do you know what a moose clit looks like? I'm just, shit up. I'm just not even gonna ask. But that's what they called the it. movie. The movie has aged pretty well. I liked it better now than I did back when I. I first did. Saw I did too. And a lot of people um, say that actually. It's over over the t- over time. It's kind of fucking aged in a certain way, like a fine wine. There are only really two things that I would have changed. It would have been easy tweaks, and I think the movie would have fucking ended up benefiting from it. But, you know, it's the director who's going to make this call. The first thing I would have done is I would have toned down the soldiers and changed their, tweaked their dialogue just a little bit. Yeah, they're so very they shouty. So they weren't quite over the top, all right? I think they would have been better played a little more straight and a little more menacing. I think sometimes less is more when it comes to menacing. yeah. I, I would have left him more of a fucking, a fucking down tone, possible threat, instead of something maybe that was scarier, scary because and, I, instead of just like somebody like just cackling more, and yeah, screaming at you. Yeah, too much cackling and too much over the top. To me, kind of was detrimental. They didn't feel threatening. They just felt like idiots, um, which I think took away that took took away their the, the power to which manage. and that wasn't even like so much i mean Rhodes was slightly over the top but it yeah. wasn't even so much him that bothered me it was it was like the fat guy yeah, and like yeah. those other and, like because they were just like going around going, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know just like yeah. all the time no i think Rhodes did pretty good job i would have made yeah. him a little less shouty but like i said you know that's the director's call i don't really agree with that one the second thing that would have been a super easy tweak i think that what the movie would have benefited from is to get rid of the fake accents you don't need to have a Jamaican accent on the guy. You don't need an Irish accent. I mean, you're not. those accents didn't work. Maybe they did back in those days, but we live in a globalized society. Everybody knows what the accents really sound like now. And if you can't fucking do it perfectly, don't do it. It would have been better if they were just American guys. If they just talked the way they just, would normally yeah, do. Yeah, and, and, and I think those characters would have been remembered a little more. The, the fucking the black guy should have basically been played straight a kind of character that, you know, um, oh, fucking, um, who's the dude I'm thinking of? Dude played, played, uh, cross Kurt Russell in a thing. Um, did all the voiceovers for all the fucking yeah, yeah, crime yeah, films. What's his name? You. Um, and then, uh, the other guy, he was kind of reminded me of the character from, um, Alien 1, the, uh, uh the, uh, the guy who fucking, Worked down in with the mechanics. Yeah. Remember the guy who just said, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should have just been that guy. Right. <laughs> I forgot what his name was in the character. I don't yeah, I can't. I'm not really sure why exactly. It's all like, about Keith David. Yeah. The, the fucking you. helicopter pilot basically should have been a character kind of like Keith David's character in, in, in the thing. You know what I mean? Which is just straight African-American guy. Because he was doing heroic shit in the movie. Remember that? He saved the... He pulled yeah. guns on the soldiers and shit. So I think he would have come across as a stronger character just in his own accent. Yeah, because he was uh, talking in the documentary too, and he just yeah. he's just sort of an American guy, so he yeah. doesn't. Um, and it's really weird because Romero like asked him like, uh, "Hey, can you do a West Indian accent?" And he did it, and he's like, "Okay, do that." So it's like, yeah. so like I said, I don't think there was any, there wasn't really any script reason no, for him he... to have to be yeah like West Indian, you know, no. like to to be Jamaican. I just think it was some extra shit. Maybe it would have played well back in the eighties, but it just didn't age as well. As it would today. He'd have been better if it was just a straight American dude. Maybe that's the thing. I, f- I kind of feel like maybe in the mid-80s there was kind of a thing where it's like they liked having like Jamaican dudes in their movies. Jamaican dudes. Or they wanted more exotic kind of characters in the movies. Yeah, maybe that's the, what it was. Like, everybody had to be some kind of foreigner. Because, you know what I mean, there, were, there, weren't, there weren't as many foreigners around, I guess, at the time. Maybe it was an immigration thing. I don't know. Well, and I don't know if it was so much. He's like, exotic. well, if if these are the only people left on Earth, it's like it would be weird if they were all Americans. Maybe it's like so. Maybe that's what he was well, thinking. I'm not a, really sure. They're in a <laughs> missile silo. That's true. Okay, they're so they're the there's evidently the remnant remnants of the military and a science 
fucking thing. Which is, that's another strange thing, although certain things do happen in emergency situations. The Army, they had Army soldiers inside the missile silos, and the Army doesn't have any missile silos. That's all Air Force. So to be, sometimes people are, get assigned to certain areas in emergency, but just, air, to, to be accurate, you know what I mean, chances are it would have been Air Force security guys. Yeah. Not army guys. But like I said, I kind of feel like, I mean, I think even uh, the character of Sarah, she has like a throwaway line earlier. She's like, this operation was put together like in a couple of days. So yeah. it was obviously like the zombie apocalypse was taken over. Yeah. And like some of the like remnants of the authorities were like, oh shit, maybe we should like get a scientific team together and get a couple guys to protect them and see what we can do. And maybe yeah. that's like the only people right. that were left. Just so they didn't really. Just together real quick. Yeah. Because so she yeah. does say that like at yeah. one point. So it's right. just like kind of like all these, this is very ramshackle right. operation. And they don't even know if anybody is left out there, like to yeah. to give them commands or like tell them what to do. So they're just kind of like stuck down there, yeah. Ex- you know, to experimenting and cutting up all these zombies and all this other kind of shit and just going batshit yeah. crazy down in this fucking mine. I think Air Force would have looked cooler though, because the Air Force True. never gets enough screen screen time. They got good Air Force security <laughs> guys. They had a bad, and in in that era, they had a badass uniform, fucking you know, a bit OD green, and I think they had little blue berets and shit. Yeah, yeah, fucking, yeah. I think that like was little about ascot the things that looked it looked pretty cool. That would have looked cool. Maybe they couldn't cool. get their hands on any of those outfits. Yeah, maybe. Because like, I mean, you got to think too. These are like low budget movies, so they're right. just kind of like it's kind of like a catch as catch can type of movie making thing. It's like, right. hey, can we get this, that, and the other? No, we can't get that. Well, then we'll just have to use this. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They just kind of use whatever. But like I said, I think. Now, interestingly, George Romero uh, cited this as his favorite of his zombie movies. He really, really liked this one. Um, and Tom Savini, I think, has long said that this is probably, like, his best work. And I I don't know. I might have to agree with him on this one. Because some of the fucking gags in this, like I said, the, the fucking the moose clit guy, like, with just the brain yeah. left and the, and the body. Like, all the fucking, uh, you know, people going over sideways and all their guts falling out. Like, fucking roads getting torn in half and, like, all yeah. the guts and him going, choke on it! You yeah. know what I mean? That's so fucking great. Like, the one guy getting his head torn off, the one guy getting his eye popped out, the like, zombie getting his fucking top of his head cut off with a shovel. It's just like, oh, and the Miguel getting his fucking arm chopped off and then fucking cauterized. Yeah. It's like just the gore in this is just it's so so good. I mean, yeah. and all of it is like really realistic. Yeah. Like I think it's like honestly, Dawn of the Dead the gore was good in that too, but I like that they went with like a more realistic looking zombie uh appliances and stuff cuz I feel like Dawn of the Dead a lot of the zombies in that just kind of had like green makeup on their faces and it didn't look Yeah quite as cool in this one there's still a few green zombies like lurking around in the background but what they did basically was i mean tom savini has said that you know a few months before they started shooting it's like basically i had me and my whole crew and we were just down in my basement making thousands of zombie appliances for all the extras and stuff like that like masks and like pieces of face that could be like put on and off like really quick so the fact that they really went the extra mile to do the fucking effects like as realistic as they were i mean they really really hold up yeah i mean and, and yeah, i have still looked great a lot and of bub looked really yeah. good too I, I understand i saw the gags i know how they did it yeah so I, me I too but i didn't know how they did it at the time when i first saw it when i was a kid i see it now and i go oh, i see what you did i see what you did but you have to look you have to look closely and you have to have a knowledge of magic and fucking special effects but back in the day when i saw this it was fucking mind blowing, especially when they fucking took that head off that body and the head still looked alive. And the and the eyes were still. Moving. Yeah, and I didn't see the cut. Yeah, I, I, I bought I bought the whole shot. Can I tell you my favorite yeah. part of that scene where that dude gets his head torn off? Yeah, is that when his head is torn off and he's screaming, and then like the when the scream gets higher and higher pitched yeah, until yeah, it yeah, like comes yeah, out. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, that was a nice touch. I really yeah. like that. They fucking thought of that. It's just like, I, that makes me so happy that they like put that much thought into like these gags. Well, yeah, like I said, I think that I might have, I can't remember the name of that old Tom Savini documentary that came out. Shit, man. It must've came out in 86, 87, something like that. Cause I think that day of the dead was the most recent film that he had worked on when that documentary came out. I think I saw the documentary about him before I saw this movie. So like when I saw the movie, I already knew like how all they did all the gags and everything like that. But I don't, 
I don't think that like takes away from it at all. And like I said, I, I really think this is kind of like the pinnacle of like the practical effects that he done there. I mean, they are disgusting. And the and the um the very famous story about this one, particularly that last scene where Rhodes gets torn in half by the zombies, um, they used all real pig guts. They got like these big five gallon drums of them. And they said, and we reused them like for people. We'd put them in like the fucking chest cavities and all this other kind of shit. It's like you'd do the scene, you'd scoop them back into the fucking bucket and you put the bucket in the refrigerator. So he's like, so basically we did some of the gags. We put the buckets in the refrigerator and then we went down to Florida because we were shooting some exteriors down there. And then we were going to come back and like shoot Rhodes' death scene when they came back, it had been like a couple of weeks or something like that, and someone had unplugged the refrigerator that they were keeping all the pig guts in, and they said you could smell it from like a couple blocks away. Yeah. And if you see like the behind the scenes shit where they were shooting that scene with Rhodes getting torn in half, it's like you can see all the zombies like doing this. They said Rhodes, the gut, the actor that played him, I was just watching the documentary about it. He said I can still smell it to this day. It was like the smell was just like undescribable. Damn. It's just like these rotten fuck because he was right there and he didn't have they're like we couldn't put anything like up his nose or anything like that because you could see it like on the camera. So it's like he basically just had to like he's like some of the zombies had like fucking, you know, vapor rub or like English yeah. leather or something like that, like underneath their shit. So it would like kind of mitigate it a little bit, but he didn't have anything. And he's like, you could see it. It's like, he really just looked like he wanted to hurl. Like after they said cut, it was like so fucking sad. But I was like, see, that's like fucking commitment to realism right there that we love in our fucking zombie movies. That's why I love Tom Savini. Makes you want to see uh, Dawn of the Dead now. Yeah, I was. Uh, it's weird that, like I said, that we decided to do this one first, but... Didn't somebody send us Dawn of the Dead on DVD? Or was Ooh. it Day of the Dead that somebody sent us? I don't, did somebody send I us Dawn of the Dead? somebody sent us this. I'm not or really maybe sure. Not. Maybe not. Well, I had to go. We have, like, such a huge pile. Yeah. And th now the thing about this, so like I said, this is free on Tubi at the moment. Um, they did a remake of this, I think in 2008, that I think went direct to video. I have not seen it. Um, they also did Day of the Dead Bloodline. That came out in 2018. Now, that might also be on Tubi or it might be on Shudder. I can't remember. I heard that wasn't too bad. Um, I might check it out. Like, the remake that they made in 2008, they said pretty much other than it being set, like, in an underground bunker and, like, some of the characters names being the same it's like pretty much a completely different movie i haven't seen them i gotta see some of these newer ones um now i will say the remake of dawn of the dead which they did in 2004 was actually pretty fucking good i don't remember that one. i didn't think it was gonna be good but it's not that much like the original but it's just a really good like zombie movie in its own right have i seen that one i doubt it i saw it in the theater Okay. And then, like, I saw it subsequently again, like, on cable. I gotta ch I gotta check them out again, some of the newer ones. But, like I said, I didn't even realize there was a remake of, Dawn of Day of the Dead from 2008 until, like, I was looking at the Wikipedia page. I knew about Bloodline because I'd seen it, like, when I was scrolling through movies somewhere else. And I was like, Did, what? I was like, I didn't I can't keep that. them all straight because there's also spinoffs. Yeah, there's spinoffs. Yeah. And, like I said, and George Romero kept making... Like, he yeah. made one called Land of the Dead. Um, he made Diary of the Dead, which was, like, a found footage. Yeah. Which... I didn't love. That guy it was, was trapped, okay. He was trapped on the roof, or trapped in the store, and they're showing, showing each other messages. And they're looking Shit, at each man, other now through I a rifle scope. Now I can't even remember. Yeah, there's so there's so many fucking. Offices. Land of the Dead was the one with Dennis Hopper in it. Yeah, they had the big fucking bus with the big bi bus and the big yeah. building. John Leguizamo was in it. Yeah, the, I liked that one actually. I haven't seen that one in forever. Yeah, I liked that one. I think the sadly though, I think a lot and please. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought most of the gore in that was CGI, which was kind of a bummer. Like, especially because the practical effects in this one were so fucking good. Yeah. And I just... It was another era. And the scope of these old movies was a lot smaller. You're only, like, in a couple locations. and You know what I mean? Uh, you didn't have to pack so much stuff into a movie like you do now. Now everything's CG. They're going to show you all these different fucking locations. Something has to be happening in every five seconds. Yeah, because they little, can green screen you anywhere. Green screen it that you, <laughs> you don't have to actually be there. Yeah. It's just <laughs> funny because sometimes that works when it's done real well. Other times, nah, you, you get the feeling of it doesn't feel real. Yeah. In a way. Like I said, These it's like... The older ones, they feel like it's really happening in a location and it feels like you're actually seeing something that actually exists. Yeah. And the scope of the story is a lot smaller, which I, which makes them a little more intimate in a certain way. 
You never I, thought about? Well, I think maybe that's why I find it like easier to relate to a lot Not of these personal. like older yeah. zombies because yeah. at least there's like a couple of characters, only a few characters, yeah. and you know I don't really think you necessarily need to. I think that's what happened with the movie version of um, what the fuck was it? World War Z or whatever. That's I think that's why I didn't like that yeah, one. Yeah, not too good. Is because they tried too hard to like show you the global scope of the yeah. zombie apocalypse. But I think no. you know trying to do that, you know, that's fine. But this is more if yeah. you don't have like a connection like to yeah. a small group of people or care that you care if they die or anything, then all of that is not going to matter right. to you because people's brains just can't. Less take is, all that in. Less is more in a zombie movie. We saw that one. Remember that Korean zombie movie we just saw where the guy was trapped in the damn apartment? Yeah. And the girl was in the apartment across the way? Yeah, hashtag alive. Yeah, see, that's how you do it. That was a good movie. Yeah, because you, it was like two characters and yeah. you gave a shit about the... You're, yeah. Like, you didn't want them to get eaten. Yeah. You, it's and, like, and, yeah, I get that everybody's zombies. I get yeah. that. You don't gotta, like, show, like, yeah. look, there's zombies, like, taking over the whole city. I get that. No, you don't have to, you don't gotta show me. Yeah, no, small scale. I believe you. Small scale personal <laughs> story of just a couple people. That's all you need. So I like, I mean, Day of the Dead, they did have the one cool scene near the beginning where, you know, it's like the beginning sequence where they go out in the helicopter and they go to the street. Like I said, they shot it in Fort Myers, Florida. Um, and there's just like nobody around. It's just garbage. And then they start yelling for people and then like all the zombies start coming out. So I think that was like the first time you got to see like an abandoned city, like in George Romero's zombie movies. And that was cool, but that's all you need. I mean, that's all you need. You just show one thing. It's like, look, everybody's dead. Everybody's zombies. Let's get back into the, like, the character drama and the gore and watch Dr. Frankenstein cutting up zombie bodies and talking yeah. to Bub and getting him to, like, fire guns and listen to a Walkman. Yeah. You know? So, you know. But, yeah. So, Day of the Dead, if you haven't seen it and you're, if you really like gore, you'll be into it. Because I really, really like the, the shit on this. But the character drama is really good, too. Like I said... Could have done with a little toning down. Not so much Rhodes, but like his sidekicks. Were yeah, a there's only two changes tackling. I would have made. There's only two changes I would have made, and that was the accents and the fucking tone of the fucking beta, yeah. the, the, the supporting soldiers. But, man, you know, that's kind of modern. Excuse me, that's kind of minor. Yeah. That doesn't make a big difference, and uh, the movie's enjoyable to watch. It, it's, it's, like, like, it's like an enjoyable shit show. Basically. I mean, all of Romero's movies are enjoyable, yeah. I think. That's kind of why people still remember him as, like, yeah. king of the zombie movies nowadays. It's kind of got a post-apocalyptic feel to it. Yeah. It feels like the other ones, and you're, like, going, yeah, okay. And yeah. it's real, like, claustrophobic, because yeah. they're all just, like, all these people just, like, sniping yeah. at each other in this yeah, little underground kind of shit. It's crazy, implausible shit happens, but you don't care. You're like, yeah, okay. It's just, you know. Well, a zombie apocalypse a is not movie, all that yeah. plausible, so it's like, you yeah. know, you got to suspend your disbelief when you're yeah. into, like, horror movies. It's just fun. <laughs> Yeah. It's a fun movie. That's what it's supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. All right, so that'll do it for our uh, discussion of George Romero's Day of the Dead. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Bye.